Now, let me just say this clearly and obviously for the record, because sometimes it feels like we have comprehension and listening problems. So let me be perfectly clear. I am not suggesting or saying or implying or demanding that people like Roman Reigns, that people be fans of Roman Reigns. I am not saying that at all. Let me repeat that. I am not saying, implying, requesting, demanding that you be a fan of Roman Reigns or like Roman Reigns. I am not. For a couple of years now, I've understood why a lot of fans kind of resent him and the push that he gets and the way that he's featured by WWE, excuse me, E, and how he's presented. Like, I get it. You look at him, and you see a lot of similarities between him and Cena. And if you're not one of those kind of 16 to 24-year-olds that kind of grew up on Cena that think he was really good when he was very damaging to the product and the brand, you understand that you had just emerged from Cena's decade of doom. The last thing you want to do is go through the reign of reigns and have another decade just like that, which will be even more disastrous long term. I get it. Totally get it. And while Roman Reigns looks good, like he's a handsome fella, young guy, good backstory, former college football player, married with a family, uh, multiple-time cancer survivor. Like, that's an interesting and compelling story that naturally gets people kind of emotionally attached to him a little bit. At the end of the day, it might look good in terms of public appearances, and it might look good from a sanitized corporate type of world and corporate type of environment, but he doesn't move the needle. He does not have that charisma, that level of star power that is going to captivate people and suck them in and say, I've got to see him on TV every week. I've got to pay money to go see him in person. And no matter how much the WWE tries to force people into believing it's true, they know it's not and we know it's not. You know, again, it's the similarities with Cena. There are so many of the similarities. It's not exactly the same. Cena was significantly worse. Let's cut the crap. And if you're going to say, well, Cena could cut a promo once in a while, that's also true. But he also had his fair share of clunkers. And a lot of his matches don't nearly live up to the standard of Romans. But when you, when you look at it, you look at Cena and you say, he was pounded and pounded and pounded and pounded for a decade. He was the prop. No matter what they did, they always made sure it came back to him. He got the Hogan and Austin treatment without the Hogan and Austin box office results. And that is true. And you see similarities with that with Roman, and it kind of disgusts you, in part because you don't know that he ever truly earned it. What the hell does that even mean in WWE anymore? But more so, you think, we just emerged from Cena's decade of doom. I don't need another decade of Reigns taking this company's product even further down the toilet. Get it. Totally get it. Because it's bad. Like, no matter what, they're trying to do this same type of crap with him again. And in general, wrestling fans are very anti-establishment. You know, it's a lot like when you look at our American political scene. We don't gravitate towards the most qualified, the most experienced, or maybe the best fits for the job. A lot of times we go for the Washington outsider and all of that crap, the less experience. Like, it's interesting from a presidential election standpoint, Americans typically, historically, in the past few decades, have voted for the absolutely, unequivocally least qualified person for the job, period. But they, we like the anti-establishment candidates. You know, we like the Obamas. And before you say Obama became establishment, he became establishment before he went to Iowa, though, in 2008 in caucus. Then, and I lived in Iowa at the time, I, he certainly was not the establishment candidate Hillary was. He connected and resonated with the people. Trump in 2016 never was the establishment candidate until he actually became the president. Sanders now, not the establishment candidate. So what happens is a lot of voters... Look at the establishment candidates as the safer options, the McCains and the Romneys and, and those types of guys. This goes around, or previous go around Hillary. This go around Biden and Buttigieg. Like, 
you know, freaking mayonnaise. But you, you can count on it. You feel like it's consistent. They don't overwhelm you. They don't overpower you. But you know what you're getting. And people are afraid of change. Change is strange. So they try to avoid that whenever possible. But there's a lot of people that are anti-establishment that say no matter what, defies logic, anything else, we want somebody else. So I think in part that plays into why people don't like Roman Reigns. He's viewed as the establishment candidate and so many other guys is viewed, are viewed as anti-establishment that they'll basically say ABR or anybody but Roman. And I get all of that. But here's what I don't understand. If you look at Roman Reigns as the establishment wrestler, then what in the blue hell is Charlotte Flair? How could you not like Roman Reigns because he's bad on the mic? But you like Charlotte Flair, who is even worse on the mic. How could you not like Roman Reigns because you don't think he's a great wrestler, yet his matches and his body of work, by and large, are significantly better than Bocce Bitch Flair's body of work? Roman Reigns looks like a pretty man. Charlotte Flair looks like a manly man. The hell is it that I don't get? How could you hate Roman Reigns but love Charlotte Flair when at least you can say Roman's got some nepotism in there but not certainly to the level where that automatically is going to get him a foot in the door when clearly the foot in the door for Charlotte freaking Flair was that her daddy Woo! What's the nature of Ric Flair? If you don't like the fact that Roman Reigns has been pounded down your throats and he's had these WrestleMania main events, Charlie Flair got a WrestleMania main event to the point where they had to shoehorn her in, illogically and oddly fitting, into a story that was all about Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch last year. Just to try and force it down everybody's throats. It's Charlotte Flair that's, what, a 10-time champion? It's Charlotte Flair that just won the freaking Women's Royal Rumble when she had no business doing so. How the hell does this make any sense whatsoever? Beyond just the sheer fact of, I look at a Charlotte Flair and I say, what the hell is the appeal? Why do people think she's good? Why? Because WWE tells you she's good? Like, have we gotten that simple-minded where we can't think for ourselves anymore? And look, there could be wrestlers I don't like or I'm not jamming with or I'm not fans of. I can at least understand and get their appeal. I can give them that. You can even say that with Cena back in the day. Like, he was a prop for the corporation, but sometimes he could cut a decent promo. And when he didn't have his head too far up his rear, he could actually be part of an interesting angle. But you have none of that with Charlotte! Like, imagine raging at the thought of Roman Reigns making it to the final two of the Rumble, which, by the way, yet again, he didn't win. But then earlier in the night, you celebrate because Charlotte Flair won the Women's Royal Rumble. Like, who the hell is being more forced here? At least when Rome is being positioned in certain spots, it's being done in a way that kind of makes sense. And there is a logic there. You might not agree with the logic. You might not like the logic. You might disdain the logic. But there is a logic there. There is a sense and sensibility there that doesn't exist for Charlotte. They just randomly come out and figure out, it's been too much. We've got to pound her back up everybody's a-holes. Like, if she was somebody that actually moved the needle, then it doesn't matter if I like her or not. She moves the needle, big picture, got to put up with it. This company has nobody that moves the needle. And most especially, it sure as hell isn't Charlotte freaking Flair. So how dare these fans sit there and praise Charlotte Flair and talk about how great she is and then in the next tweet, or the next video, or the next social media post, talk about how crappy and forced Roman Reigns is. What the hell are you smoking? What planet are you living on? Because A, 
what the hell is the difference? And B, if you want to say there is a difference, yeah, there certainly is. Roman is more interesting, more appealing, 